Hey guys, what's up? Farmar here. Uh, today, I'm going to be going over the Feral Patch 8.3 Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide. Um, I'm going to go over everything you need to know as a Feral Druid to go into Mythic Plus and kick ass. Uh, first off, uh, I do want to note that this is this video is going to be in a new format. Um, I'm basically going to be doing, you know, kind of like PowerPoint kind of presentation. I'll be going over things like that. Um, if you guys do not like this style of guide let me know if you do like this style of guide let me know i read all the comments down below if you have questions if i did not clarify anything feel free to ask below i pretty much i, I respond to anybody that that has a respondable comment or question essentially um so anyways just a quick note on that let me know how you guys like this video down below i would really appreciate that going forward Alright, let's go ahead and jump into this. So, Feral Druids in Season 4 of Mythic Plus Dungeons. Um, we have uh, a great number of strengths, and uh, I'll go over the weaknesses in a second. So, we do tons of AoE damage. We do tons of single target damage. We have an AoE speed buff with Stampeding Roar, which is actually really effective in some of the boss fights, especially in, like, Workshop or um, in the new Corrupted Affix. And then, also, we have good off-healing, Curse slash Poison Removal. We've got... Um, Brez as well. Um, in the new corruption affix, Brez is not battle res is not as great because you can't actually battle res anybody that dies while they're in the corruption phase. Um, but the curse and poison removal is actually really strong against the uh, the spider um, the spider affix uh, because it puts a bunch of poisons on your team that hit really hard, and then also puts a curse on your team that hits really hard. So. Um, I would actually argue Feral's pretty decent for the new affix. Um, and then Stampeding Roar also helps your team get through the kiting, especially with the blob, and helps your tank with the uh, the big tank corrupted affix guy. I don't know his name. Anyways, uh, weaknesses. We're not a rogue. Yeah, I'm not trolling. Seriously, that's our biggest weakness is the fact that we're not a rogue. We don't have Cloak, we don't have Cheat Death, and we don't have Shroud, right? So... I would argue that ferals are very good, but rogues do the same amount of damage as us and, you know, have cloak, cheat death, and shroud. So it's a little bit unfortunate. They also can pick locks for Tolda Gore and things like that, but I would say ferals are probably right now in a better spot in Mythic Plus than we have been the entire expansion. Um, rogues are just rogues so let's go ahead and go into what you guys need to know about gearing up for the mythic plus season so azurite traits your best in slot azurite traits handed hands down are going to be wild flesh rending you want three wild flesh rending traits always in mythic plus followed up by one gushing lacerations so if you got three wild flesh rendings and you got one gushing lacerations you're set your next two traits that you can get I would recommend getting a mixture of Jungle Fury and Heart of Darkness. Both of those are actually very strong. Um, so, yeah. But your main goal with the Azurite traits is you're going to get the Triple Wild Flesh Rending and the one Gushing Lacerations. The reason the Gushing Lacerations is so strong is because in Mythic Plus, you're usually, or you should be, running Primal Wrath, which is going to apply rips to everything in an AoE. So that's basically an extra 254 damage based on this tooltip here on my screen. Um to everything around you every single time gushing laceration or every time rip ticks, right? So anyways, um that's a pretty big boon there. Uh next up let's go into essences. Alright, so best in slot essence uh hands down is gonna be blood of the enemy rank three. If you do not feel like farming up blood of the enemy rank three, you have two other options here. If you have a team that is primarily AoE, right, and you guys need some boss damage or it's tyrannical week, anything like that, vision of perfection is actually gonna be a pretty good um choice for any sort of tyrannical week where you need to do a bunch of boss damage and your team's already got all the aoe covered right essence of the focusing iris is never a bad choice pretty much for any class um for mythic plus uh, it does a lot of aoe damage now the thing that about blood of the enemy is any pack that's going to last longer than eight seconds uh blood of the enemy is actually going to do more damage overall than focusing iris um 
and then blood of the enemy also does incredible damage single target wise too and focusing iris does not really do any damage to single target not notable damage to single target uh, your miners are going to be Breath of the Dying, Lucid Dreams, and Conflict and Strife. If you're going into Underrot, you'll want to switch out your Conflict and Strife for Purification Protocol Rank 3. Um, <clears throat> if you do not have Purification Protocol Rank 3, you should probably get it because it's actually really useful in the raid as well. Um, that one is kind of a pain in the ass to farm though, so I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not going to, you guys can decide that. Um, but anyways, these are the essences that I recommend running in Mythic Plus this season. Next up, everybody's favorite topic of the patch, corruption. So, with corruption, all right, Echoing Void is actually kicking ass right now, but it's getting a ha it's getting a 50% nerf. Um, so, I don't know if it's really going to be as potent as it currently is. I think it's going to be strong still, but I don't think it's going to be absolutely amazing in every single situation single target and aoe uh, twilight devastation is actually really good for aoe in mythic plus and then gushing wounds is really good for both um uh, AOE as well as single target so I would recommend uh, picking up a gushing wounds you have it um, or twilight devastation if you have echoing void already feel free hammer away it's pretty good corruption i don't think it's going to be um bad going forward i think it's just going to be not as dominant um your weapons uh so those corruptions are going to be for your gear you know the weapon corruptions are going to be your anzig vra and your quarneleth um from the raid uh, of course you can always get a chested or a mythic plus weapon that rolls corruption on there but these are the strongest weapons as of right now uh anzig Vra is going to have the devouring vitality which deals two percent of your health to a target it does really good in aoe situations and it also does really good in single target in single target it's probably going to do about six to seven percent of your overall dps uh coronel Eth has the echoing voids on it so basically the same thing there just knocked over my drink all right anyways let's move forward uh trinkets so <clears throat> ash veins razor coral is actually your best trinket this patch as well which is interesting and it kind of raises that question of does blizzard want us to be farming old content for um you know to be relevant in the new content and this is a trinket that i say really argues that point um Torment in the Jar is going to uh, drop off of uh, uh, Zanesh, which is the soccer boss, and um, this is actually a really good AoE trinket, and it's a pretty decent single target as well, so I would recommend picking one of these up as soon as possible um, if you have that option. Uh, and then you've got the tiny electrum mineral in a jar, which is going to come from the Temple of Sithralis. And then you've got the writhing segment of Drestagath, which in the name suggests it drops off of Drestagath in the new raid. Um, both of those are also very strong. Your absolute bis for dungeons are going to be Ash Veins, Razor Coral, and Torment in a Jar, though. So if you can get those, get them as soon as you can, and go hammer away and do all the DPS that you possibly can. Alright, next up, Standard Talents. So... Your standard talents, and I will go over why I have Mass Entanglement uh, highlighted in a second. So, Sabretooth with Wild Charge, Balance, Affinity. This is going to be pretty standard, as well as uh, Soul of the Forest and Blood Talons. But the thing that you're going to switch out in Mythic Plus for a Feral is you're going to go from the Brutal Slash to the Primal Wrath. Um, the reason being, Brutal Slash is very strong, but the only change that you have to do from the standard raid single target build is changing over to that primal wrath because that's going to give you a huge lift the way that it also um kind of falls hand in hand with soul of the forest whereas primal wrath pretty much every cast every time you cast it in aoe it it first of all it gives you something to it, it gives you a finisher to use as a feral druid sometimes you're wondering like in aoe situations what the hell what Wait, you know, do I just buy this, or do I use a swipe, or a brutal slash, blah, 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 whatever. Um, in this, it gives you a, a finisher for AoE, uh, which is very strong, it's very good. Um, Soul of the Forest basically makes it free if you cast it at four or five combo points, and then um, 
Also, Solar Force buffs the damage of all the rips and all the upfront damage that Primal Wrath does in an AoE situation as well by 5%. So it's very strong. Um, and this is what allows Ferals to get off the big numbers that you see Ferals getting off. Um, the reason I have Mass Entanglement highlighted here is because if you are running over 40 corruption you're going to be getting the thing from beyond which is uh, based on your corruption and it's actually going to chase you down and deal damage to you i think it does percent damage i think it does like 20 to 30 percent or something like that um mass entanglement will actually allow you to quickly stave off that threat um so you can root it almost immediately. You can also use a mouse over macro on your roots if you want to use it with your predatory swiftness. It's very easy to handle a thing from beyond his feral druid, so I would recommend practicing that in Mythic Plus, maybe taking it into raid. Um, all right, for those of you that are pretty hyped on the Incarn build, because I know I'm really enjoying the Incarn build, I don't have the perfect stats for it though, so my standard build is still simming higher. Once I get more versatility gear, I'll probably be switching over the Incarn build every now and then just to kind of get that adrenaline rush of, you know, just lopping out so much damage. Um, but you can run Incarn if you are running Vision and Perfection as your major in dungeons. Um, the only thing you're going to be switching from the standard Incarn build is basically Primal Wrath. And then also same notes on the Mass Entanglement there. Um, so the Incarn build is very viable, especially on Tyrannical Weeks. Um... But just note that you're not going to be pumping out as much damage as the Soul of the Forest build overall on, on AoE pulls. Um, that there's really just, that's the hands down best like overall build. So if you have Blood of the Enemy rank 3, I highly recommend running the Soul of the Forest um, talents. Um, Alright, so some situational talents here is going to be your level 15 talent row, which basically is just Predator or Sabretooth because Lunar Inspiration is garbage. Predator is very strong um, and is actually uh, decent in AoE situations as well. You can almost keep up 100% um, uptime on your Tiger's Furies for all the AoE pools in dungeons, so definitely check that one out. And then Balance Affinity uh, versus Guardian and Resto Affinity. So, Guardian Affinity actually helps out, I noticed, helps out tanks a lot during Necrotic Weeks specifically because you can taunt off and actually hold on to a mob for a, a good while as a Guardian Affinity Druid. Um, and then, Resto Affinity is also really good, especially on affixes like, um, like Bursting in small amounts, but... The, the thing about Resto Affinity is if your your healer is maybe new to Mythic Plus or you don't completely trust your healer or maybe you want to kind of take the healing, um, you know, off-roll spec kind of fantasy into your own hands, which I highly, like, I'm all for Feral Druids that want to play kind of like the supportive DPS role. I think that's a really fun kind of fantasy that the class should fulfill a little bit better, but... Right now, this is really your only option, is these affinities here. So, anyways, you can get some clutch heals off with the Swift Men's and putting the Rejuves up and kind of helping out your healer with the rest of affinity, um, as well as the passive Ysir's gift healing. Um, so, yeah, I would say those are mainly the talents that you're going to switch up situationally based on how you want to play your class. Um, Balance Affinity is kind of the default for doing the most DPS because it gives you the extra range on your... Uh, attacks but anyways guys that is going to be it for the patch 8.3 mythic dungeon guide um if i missed anything or you have questions or comments if you didn't like the video format or anything like that or you want me to add something next time um feel free to drop a comment below or say hey in my twitch chat um i'm pretty active and i'm getting a lot better at responding to messages in twitch chat um so yeah, stop by and say hey, and anyways, uh, good luck in 8.3 in the Mythic Dungeons, my friends, and uh, yeah, have a good one. See ya.